Hi guys, I'm Dave. Welcome to Beer Virtually. This is my buddy Brian. And today we are drinking <laughs> a Tu Le Monde. Did yes, I say it? That's correct. All right, so this is from Unibro, I think is how you say it. It's a, uh, it's the Canadian um, microbrew that brews Terrible and La Fin de Mont, um, both of which I just recently uh, reviewed. Um, this is a 4.5% um, farmhouse saison. Very good. It's pretty clear in color. Let's see from the. Oh, it's really light. I like ales. <clears throat> I like to play. I don't know what to say on camera, by the way. I'm used to being behind the microphone. I have a face for radio, not TV or video. <laughs> <clears throat> so, this beer is a little harder to pour than I expected. Um, more carbonation than I expected. Let's try this again. I'll get it right the second time. We've got more. Y yeah. We've got to do another take. Wow, look at all that head. I'm just pouring it super slow. Head is good. <laughs> I can't, can't disagree with you. <laughs> <clears throat> do you smell that yet? I do smell that. What do you smell? What do you, what do you, uh, there's a little bit left in the bottom there. Um, it smells pretty good. Because I'm not a craft beer guy. I'm not a beer snob, like, you know, as I like to say. Um, I kind of am, I guess. You know, uh, I'm, I'm a Bud drinker. You know, I grew up in St. Louis, and my grandpa drank Budweiser. Like, I've just been a Budweiser guy my entire life. And every now and then I'll, you know, I'll get into a beer like this. Or I'll get into an ale or something like that. But that's really it. I'm, I'm not a dark beer guy. And so, you know, I've tried some of the other rock bands that have beers. Um, but this is the first time I've had this, and I've been waiting to try this one. What other band's beers have you had? Uh, Iron Maiden's The Trooper is really good. Um, and then uh, ACDC has one that's pretty good. Uh, but I also know, I think that Queen has one, a Bohemian Lager. Uh, Kid Rock's got his badass beer, but I've never had either one of those. So Iron Maiden's beer, I believe, is by Harrison Brewing. I'm not sure who does the um, ACDC beer. And Kid Rock, I saw a thing on it. I think that's by uh, De Detroit Brewing. Detroit, I think it's Detroit Brewing. Yeah, it's, so. the, it's rock and roll ale or something like that, isn't it? It's badass beer. Is what badass it is. beer? Yeah, that's what Kid Rock says. So it, there's so much out in here, it looks almost like a, uh, what's the, like a souffle on top of this thing. <laughs> Look at this. Right, it, looks, it looks like whipped like egg whites on there. <laughs> that means it's healthy, right? So I smell right off the bat a lot of citra hops. If I, I, I'm not sure if the citra hops in there, but that's what it smells like. It smells like uh, orange and grapefruit almost. See, I didn't know I was supposed to smell it. I just drank it. First sip. Very refreshing. I like it. I mean, it's... It's, um... it's light. Yeah, um... A little a pretty quick finish it doesn't really linger because I'm not a craft beer guy I'm gonna tell you it tastes like Iron Maiden's beer a little bit <laughs> because they all kind of taste like this to me when I get to this point but it's also only 4.5 percent so you could have a couple which I feel like is a little less than what I was expecting because I know when I used to drink some of the other ales are always like 8.5 and I get you know I get drunk off like four <laughs> well, yeah, was, sometimes some of these beers, you know, if you spent eight bucks a piece for them, you want to get something for your money, and part of one of the things they deliver for the money is alcohol. Right. So, And this one only comes in a four-pack, right? Yeah, this, this comes in a four-pack, or I think it might come in a bomber. All You might be able to get it in a, in a, 20, in a 750 milliliter bomber. So, like Brian just said, 4.5% alcohol, um, 22 on the IBU scale. If I had a guess, I would have guessed around 40 22 is how bitter it is. 20, the lower it is, the less bitter. 100 is like super hoppy bitterness. So this is only 22. This is a good beer, though. I mean, and it was, and it's pretty inexpensive, right? It was uh, 7.99 the four pack. Brian, so all your years in uh, hanging out with bands and doing radio stuff, have you ever met Dave? I have met Dave. I've met Dave um, a number of times actually, and of course you always hear stories about how. You know, 
certain people in bands are, you know, are jerks or not, or they're cool or whatever. And the first time I ever met Dave was at the NAM Music Convention, which is the big thing for all the musicians to go to every year. What does NAM stand for? Uh, National Association Music something, musician something or other. Not really important. <laughs> um, and so I, I went out there with a friend of mine. I was living in California at the time, and he had gotten us in through uh, a guitar company. And we actually got the we actually got to watch Megadeth play in the hotel lobby or the hotel lounge. That's cool. doing a few show doing a few songs off their record they were putting out at the time. So that was awesome. And then, but before this, before that, we were just kind of standing off to the side a little bit. And this was right after Dimebag Daryl had been shot. So, so what year was this? Um, gosh, what year was that? Probably 2005 or six, maybe? Been that long? Yeah, and so we were just kind of standing. Me and him were just talking, and we're just, you know, watching different musicians and stuff walk by and, you know, whatnot. And my friend just happens to look over, and he's like, dude, I think that's Dave Mustaine standing behind you. And there was, like, this roped-off area, you know, like the velvet rope kind of thing. Right. And I look back, and I'm like, that is... He's like, let's go talk to him. And I'm like, well, how are we getting around this rope? And there was nobody standing there. There, and there was like the opening. And so my friend just kind of pulls one of these giant steps like next to him. One giant step to the left yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, then, and then I did the same thing. And the next thing I know, we're literally standing to Dave Mustaine, like me and you are sitting right now. And we're standing there. And my friend's like, hey, Dave, can I get a, can I get a photo? And he's like, yeah. So he takes a picture with him, and then... Did you take a picture with him? Yeah, I'm like, hey, can I grab... He's like, yeah, no. And then, like, for some reason for me, he was like... Oh, oh, <laughs> he, like, me and him were, like, best buds or something. It was so weird. I got this really awesome picture with him that time. You still have it? Yeah, I still got it. And we, you know, we chatted a few times. You if, know, you, if you have it, I'll throw it up right over. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, we, we chatted a little bit longer after that, just between the three of us. And then we were like, all right, you know, have a good night. And he started talking to other people, and we, and we walked away. And... Um, and then I met him a few years later. And like I said, I've met him probably four or five times over the years now. But every single time, Dave Mustaine has always been the coolest dude to me. But I still hear stories about how he could be that guy. But I've never had a bad experience with him. You've with never it, witnessed him being a it, I've never witnessed him doing it. I've never, and I've met all the guys in the band at some point in time throughout th- throughout my years in radio and stuff. But And they're all awesome dudes. Like, I have nothing bad to say. And they were just cool dudes. Yeah, you've seen them in concert, right? Seen him in concert a number of times. Always a great show. Saw him at the Hard Rock um, probably in 2009 or 10 here in Orlando. And it was right, it was the day after Thanksgiving, I think. So there was nobody there. <laughs> there might have been like a few hundred people in the crowd, but it was amazing because we were all right there. We were right at the front. At Hard Rock? At the Hard Rock. They have like a, uh, a venue, like a, like a. Yeah, they have the concert, concert venue there. Yeah. And, um, so that was an awesome show, and um, you know I met him another time after a show in Vegas, and um, and he was actually making jokes about how I had long hair, and it was way longer than his, and it was mm-hmm. really it was a really weird conversation, but yet really funny at the same time. Um, you can always judge who's talking more by the by, by the whole the, by the level of the beer. Well, you know what? I was gonna totally throw you off in this entire segment by just downing this entire <laughs> beer and been like. Cool, it's pretty good. You should try it. But I didn't want to throw you off too much. So so I usually rate the beers kind of on untap scale, one to five. And I would give this somewhere between a three and a half and three and three quarters out of five. It's not I it's not it's not complex enough to be a five. Um it doesn't have quite enough flavor to be a five, you know, to be up on that end of the scale, but it's very drinkable. Um I also kind of rate a beer at how many I could drink. Right. And I, I, could, I could definitely I could do a couple of these. <laughs> <clears throat> you know what? I'm going to give it a five because I can give it a five. <laughs> because I don't judge it on any of that other stuff that you were just talking about. Um, it's better than Bud Light, so we give it a I five. I would totally drink this. <laughs> like, I will totally go to the store and buy more of this because this is actually really good. I do really like it. Um, but again, it's an ale, so that's what I like. If I'm going to go beer snob, i got to go on an ale. And I so, like ales. I, I, I mean, I, ales are definitely more drinkable than a stout or a porter or 
uh, lagers and pilsners are in that in that drinkable range, but but ales are very drinkable. And the flavored beer? No, sorry, I'm done. Cannot do a flavored beer. I got I got to get you one of the coconut beers, and you'll you'll be you'll change your life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't do that. But I would definitely, I would totally buy this again, or buy it for the first time because you bought this one. So it's it's kind of interesting that they went with Unibra to do the to brew their beer. So Unibro is a is a good size microbrew now I guess craft brewer from Canada. They're from Quebec, and um, they're one of the most decorated craft brewers in North America. They have over two hundred ninety six medals internationally, um, and this beer we're drinking actually. Uh, won the 2017 um, gold medal for the uh, uh, world beer tasting for Cezanne. Wow. That's really so, cool. yeah, I mean, it, uh, it was somebody's five for sure. <laughs> don't con- don't confuse it with Unibrow. Yeah, yeah Unibrow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so, last time I reviewed this, uh, this, another beer from this brewer, we looked up and tried to find and I think it's just Unibra. You kind of leave it open and soft at the end, like Unibra. They should put the umlaut over it just for the hell of it, <laughs> yeah. like like Motorhead did, Motley Crue did on their on their band logo. They should just put the umlaut up there for the hell of it. Yeah, it's good. It's so, quite quite a bit of lacing too for for how light the beer is. Maybe the glass is dirty. I don't know, but. <laughs> Good shit. Sorry, I didn't know if I was a cuss on that or not, but it's good stuff. I like it. I would totally drink it again. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Cheers.